Castle Panic is a cooperative tower defense board game. The players are going to work together, representing this castle, to try and fend off all the monsters. If the players survive with at least one tower left standing and they've killed all the monsters, the players win the game. However, if the monsters destroy all six towers, game's over, players lose. How it works is based on matching the cards in your hand with where the monsters are at on the board. So if you'll see, we have three different areas of the board, color-coded red, green, and blue. These are divided into rings, swordsman, knight, archer, and forest. Now you can't hit monsters in the forest ring, but once the monsters moved in, you can attack them, as I said, using the cards you have. So for example, if I had a green archer card, the green archer card only works in the green colored archer ring. I would need a green knight to hit this monster and a green swordsman if I wanted to strike in that ring. Every card played is one point of damage, and the monsters, as you can see, have numbers on their edges. That's their health points. When a monster is damaged, we rotate down to the next lowest point. Now this goblin, for example, only has one point, so the single archer would destroy him and he'd be removed from the game. However, if I were to play a blue knight card, this orc has two points of health. We keep their current health pointed at the center of the board, so I would rotate down to show that this orc has taken one point of damage and still needs one more point to be defeated. Another card I could play, for example, could be a red hero. I'm not limited to protecting any particular tower or any particular area of the board. We're all playing together and I want to defend as many parts of the castle as I can. My red hero is a wild card. It can be played as either a swordsman, a knight, or an archer. It just has to be in the red area. This troll is in the red archer, so playing the hero lets me do one point of damage to this troll. If that's all the cards I can play, then I'm done with my turn. Otherwise, I could keep playing. If I had another of any of these cards, I could put extra hits on monsters. Once I'm done, all my cards are discarded. Then it's time for the monsters to move. This is where it starts to get bad. All the monsters will move one space closer towards the castle, and then I will draw two new monsters at the end of my turn. I reach into the pile and I pull monsters one at a time. Now, if you draw a regular monster, you'll roll the die, the number you get corresponds to the arc on the board that the monster appears in. So I rolled a six, that'll be over here in blue in the forest. I place the monster with its largest health pointed at the castle, that's my first monster. For my second monster, however, uh-oh, it's not a monster, it's a monster effect. In this case, blue monsters move one. That means all the monsters in the blue color of the board are going to move one space forward. Now we have a bit of a problem because that orc we didn't kill is going to hit the castle. So first we know that we have to move the blue guys that we can move. Now we deal with damage. The rule of thumb is whenever a monster hits any part of the castle, they take one point of damage and they destroy whatever they hit. So this orc would destroy our wall and he himself would be destroyed since he only had one point left. If, for the sake of argument, he still had health points left. He would have taken one from the wall, and on the next player's turn, when it was time to move monsters, he would now move in, destroying our tower and killing himself. Towers are like our life points. When they're gone, the game is over, and they cannot be rebuilt. However, walls can be rebuilt. If you can get the combination cards brick and mortar into your hand, you can rebuild a wall, even if the tower in front of it is gone. So walls don't count towards their victory points, but they are helpful in slowing down monsters. Towers are what it's all about. To make matters even scarier, if this monster had gotten in with health points left inside the castle, now it's very bad. His movement from here on out will be clockwise, tower by tower, until either he's destroyed or we run out of towers. There are only three cards in the deck that will affect monsters inside the castle ring, so it's never a good idea to let them into your castle. The beginning of the game starts with everyone drawing up to a full hand. You get a little bit of hand maintenance where you're allowed to discard a card to draw a new one. Then you get to make a trade, and this is where the cooperation really comes in. You make one trade with one other player for one card. So for example, if you don't have any knights, but the person next to you does, maybe you can make a trade for that. Even better, maybe you're making a trade so the next player after you will have a useful card. Alright, so that's Castle Panic in a nutshell. There's all sorts of terrible monsters that will come out of this pile making it harder to survive, but you get lots of great things in the castle deck to help you fight them off. If you have at least one tower left when the game is over and you've slain all the monsters, you win the game. So good luck and happy castle defending.